present today, we don't want you to treat as a specific vision for a known future, but rather a series of strategies about how we might grow cities in the future. And in this future history of New York City, public space is integrated with infrastructure. There's new uh, affordable housing and universities, and there's soft edges and barrier islands that help to uh, protect against storm surge and start to remediate a contaminated bay. And to start with, I want to reference this Wikipedia article about the Governor's Island Authority. And we accessed this in the year 2050, so it hasn't been written for 30 years. And the, I just want to read a quick quote from it. And the Governor's Island Authority, or the GIA, is a public authority in the state of New York, the United States, that has developed and currently maintains the neighborhoods in New York City to the south of the financial district, to the west of the Red Hook neighborhoods of Brooklyn. The neighborhoods are Lower Lower Manhattan or Lolo, Governor's Heights, and Buttermilk Village, which are truthfully known as homes of the institutions such as Liberty Stadium and Governor's Campus. And what we're going to do throughout this presentation is use fictional devices such as time travel and magical realism to try to set the framework or the narrative of a world in which we're speculating different visions of the future. And so if we get back to time travel and back to the future, Marty McFly, he travels to the future and he sees the consequences of his actions. His father's murdered, um, Emmett Brown is committed, and through this they develop a cyclical understanding about the relationship between the past, the present, and the future. And they learn from their mistakes and are able to change, in the past, they're able to change their future. And so we want to create a similar, try to create a similar dialogue between the past, the present, and the future. And for us it's this red part here where, based on speculations about the future, we create a visualized evaluation that helps us change our actions in the present. And so for our our loop, it's one where we start with an assumption and we go through this cycle, and based on the evaluation of the speculation, we change our initial assumptions about the present. But before we can speculate about the future history, we want to start with the present future. And for us, the present future is the one where our cities keep growing and developing the way they have historically. And so that's the future where Marty McFly doesn't learn from his future mistakes. And so we see three major issues in the present future for New York City, but these, these could be almost any city, um, the, envir the environment, growth, and natural disaster. And historically, these competing objectives for the, the growth of a city have been in conflict with each other. And so, for example, if New York City continues to grow at current uh, population projections, and every undeveloped and underdeveloped plot of land is developed to its full potential, there'll be no more room for people by the year 2038. And so this, this map illustrates some of the conflicts that we see between these. So you see the original shoreline with the, the, the blue line for Manhattan, and you see it almost entirely matches up where we've grown the island with FEMA floodplains. So natural disasters come in conflict with the growth of the city. And so by looking at the future history of New York City, we want to realign these traditionally conflicting objectives. And so we find our opportunity in dredging. And the Army Corps of Engineers estimates that over the next 50 years, they're going to dredge 189 million cubic yards of material to maintain and deepen the harbor of New York City. And of that material, they only have beneficial placement options for about 19 million cubic yards. The rest gets shipped to Branfield sites, uh, landfills, um, and mines at a projected cost in the billions. Some of it has even been shipped as far as Texas. So we want to treat that waste as a resource. So to give you a quick example, if we dump it all back in the island, or all back in the harbor, that's the size of the island that it would make, or it's the equivalent of 137 Empire State Buildings in volume. And right now, the Army Corps of Engineers hasn't even identified placement sites for 92 million cubic yards. And we need 23 million. It's not the full 92 million, but hopefully, Thinking about the growth of the city in this way, we could change the precedent for how we use this type of waste as a resource. And the, the estimated cost for lower, lower Manhattan is 230 million, whereas the projected cost for the Army Corps of Engineers is 828 million. And so this isn't a foreign thing in the United States. In LA, Port 400 was just completed, adding 590 new acres of land using dredge material. The Hong Kong airport added 1% to the total land mass of Hong Kong. A full 20% of Tokyo Bay is landfill. And if we look at the entire country of Netherlands, one-fifth of it is landfill, and they've been doing this since the 18th century. 
And so if we look at these quantities, low, low is yellow compared to the previous examples. And if we adjust these to be able to fit in Netherlands, it's this very tiny speck compared um, to Tokyo Bay in the Netherlands. And this is cheating a little bit because we're comparing a city to a country. But we want to show this to establish that in the history of the growth of cities and countries, um, using, using land to add more mass has, has, a, has a long tradition. And even in New York, the island has grown a tremendous amount, starting with the famous 1811 gridding. And if we look at the island, the, the black being here, landfill, a full 10% of Manhattan is from land reclamation. So in the past, there's been about 3,100 acres compared to the 690 we're proposing. And it's really important, we feel, to think about this type of development in distinct phases that while self-contained, set up for the next phase. So we're currently in this first phase thinking about public policy and changing both public and legal attitudes towards how we use the water, um, how we use the shoreline, and how we use dredge material. And so far, this has been a success. The city has been changing their attitude towards the use of dredge material. And in phase two, we propose, or in phase one, we propose um, building barrier islands that we would plant with bioremediating material um, bioremediating vegetation that'll help to um, remediate the harbor. They'll protect against storm surge and rising sea levels. We'll extend the one train to Governor's Island and we'll preserve the historic district of Governor's Island as a university campus. Phase two has the first developable land. Uh, we continue the extension of the one as well as the six train around Governor's Island and into Red Hook. Um, we'll build a waste energy plant and we'll build Liberty Stadium so we can get the jets out of New Jersey and back into New York. <laughs> and this is where we start to look at some divergent futures. So in this version, the, the Governor's Island Authority is pressured by Mayor Amanda Burden to extend Governor's Island to Red Hook. So we, we looked at this, but in the end we found it, it oversaturated the market and there wasn't enough demand for this much new land. So the alternate future we chose to to explore in more depth is a connection to Manhattan. And so in this scenario, we've created 640 acres of new land, 88 million square feet of developable space. At an investment of $15 billion, we're creating 133 billion in present day value, and it'll generate 900 million in tax revenue annually for the city. So in terms of urban planning, we didn't intend any master plan as one solution. We set up some kind of rules that should be flexible and then calibrated into very specific issues for this site. So the rule is that the city will, uh, the, the, the surrounded by the soft edges and network by multi-layered, multi-level transportation and the infrastructure and the centered by cultural educational uh, facilities. So issues is uh, that I would like to focus on today is ecological issue and the water management. So how the edge accelerate the storm wars you learn off and then decrease the water quality. And the unbalanced economic value as Luke uh, explained. And this is a serious problem, water level rising and uh, storm surge. So we believe barrier islands will help remediate water, not only that, but also provide a public water park you can uh, use. This is a design for diffusing water at the storm surge, but at the same time, considering the next level of development. And subway connection should be the sustainably the sensitive, not like a second avenue uh, subway construction that is very easy just to drop in, in the prefabricated tunnel and the tethered by of the edges. That of the edges has a multifunctional uh, based on its location. So you can get the beach and the water park. And then you can get the, the historical buffer. You can intensify the characteristic of the island, not delete it. And the water transportation hub along the East River where the the shipping channel is currently heavily working. And the water plaza, this is important. That is a huge sponge system with permeable material. And then they're located at the low level of the island and they capture the water, slow it down, and then remediate it and reuse it. 
So we proposed integration of the network the water management system, multi-layered public transportation system with elevated parkway. So explain <coughs> the water plaza and the emergency setback is block wide. So water plaza is city wide drainage system, but emergency setback is the setback for block based on its size and the development size. And we don't like the bottleneck condition from the low Manhattan and low low. So we introduced the streetcar and then penetrating through the multi mass transit hub. And elevated parkway network is originally designed for the first evacuation from storm surge. So that, that is connected through the educational facility, hospitals, and the fire department, the public facilities. So you can get there within five minutes with, without being interrupted by vehicles. And the, the network by multi-layer, multi-level infrastructure and the surrounded by soft edge and the built over the 500 year uh, flood plain. This is a kind of one vision of the, the low level. So to recap, so we, we uh, the focusing on the rules and relationship of the urban planning for the future. So this is not connected. This is connected with the existing infrastructure to the new sustainable infrastructure with a program and actually the experience is merged together from old city and new city. But we don't like uh, Governor's Island lost. We want to keep its experience and characteristic of historical center. So we we need a very sensitive design for this. And then no hard edge anymore. And should it be soft edge? And then not allow the water just to go out and reuse and remediate it and then slow it down and then use that for our purposes. And then in terms of elevated parkway, we don't like just to lay it up. We want to pr provide new experience by changing in shape in plan and section. So we, we want to learn from Highline. So we get that new experience here. So no dark place is more, more light. <clears throat> and it's important, it's no more impermeable street and scattered infrastructure is hard to reconstruct and manage. And then we have a bundled infrastructure you can manage very easily. And at the same time, multi-level the, the the infrastructure never failed, even the storm surge. So storm surge never, never ruin your the infrastructure, rather change your ex city experience. So that is the image of the integration between infrastructure and the, your life on top of that. So that is integration of experience and city system. So you can see the bus, bus station with wetland park and then you can see the car road beneath there, but you can see the process of the water purification. And you can see the building performance. You can see using the water feature that is reusing water, you can drink and you have a park over there. And that the infrastructure is more kind of adaptive to the disaster. So that is not ruin your system, it's just to change your experience. So in order to test, iterate, and evaluate various speculations about the future, we've created a methodology we call X information modeling, or ZIM, where the X is a variable for any of the diverse, often competing objectives for the growth of the city, such as development concerns, environmental concerns, and zoning code. And so we take those objectives and put them into a 3D model that allows us to visualize and evaluate different speculations on the future. So for Lolo, the first tool we use is a value and density tool where we took real estate development analysis and paired it with spatial analysis of density. So in New York, spatial density is referred to as FAR, and that stands for floor area ratio. And what that means is given your lot area, you can build that many times your lot area for your FAR. So five FAR is five times your lot area. Although in New York, we never because of code, we can't build the entire lot, so five FAR might mean more like seven-story seven building, to put it in context. And so we use this tool to first 
start to move density around the site and track the things which would affect it. So in this case, we're adding six FAR at subway stops because you want more density at the subway stop and have it fall off at a half mile influence. And then we paired that with a financial analysis. So we're looking at a base value, base dollar value per FAR foot and tracking the influence similarly at subway stops. And we, we uh, estimated that it increased value by $70 per FAR foot at the subway stop. And then that increase in value would actually pay for the construction of the subway lines. And so we used this tool to figure out how the density would be distributed, but then also what was the minimum density needed to pay for low low. And from here, we could speculate on multiple alternate futures where we'd use this tool, increase the density, and see what kind of public infrastructure Lolo could generate the revenue to pay for. It would benefit not just Lolo, but the city as a whole. So for example, at 6.5 FAR, and this is maybe like the density of the village, if that helps, we get 40% of the housing to be tremendously affordable. And these aren't cumulative numbers. At 6.8 FAR, we could build the waste energy plant. At 7.1 FAR, we could build a desalination plant to start providing clean water for the region. At nine FAR, we could pay for the seven line extension to Secaucus, New Jersey, which has been a little stuck. And at 10.5 FAR, we could pay for, for all of those. And to put that density in comparison, lower Manhattan has an average density of about 17 FAR. Midtown has an average density of about 22 FAR. Uh, the Empire State Building is 33.5. So city will grow anyway, and then we wanted the quality of life over there, and then that it is a zoning resolution that control the quality. But we don't believe that the current zoning, the resolution can accommodate the flexibility and the responsiveness for the future disaster. So we add the zoning, the, the zoning information model on top of the, the existing zoning tool uh, that consists of the, the text and map sometimes to com complete each other and we keep add more and more, and it is hard to understand. So we want to just kind of one step for the evolution from the prescriptive zoning to performative zoning, and that allowed us more kind of responsive to very unique situation, and to create the more creative the development. So it can be more responsive to the street type and sun orientation, and uh, to introduce a new setback that is with, you know, not just a setback and then not develop that area, is more kind of permeable, sustainable space. And then encourage a new technology of skin and renewable energy adaptation, and you can get incentive. And then the public plazas, that is not just the public plaza, that is integrated with the infrastructure together. And then new feature of uh, the new development uh, typology that is elevated parkway and that you can save, uh, you can create the new type of mixed use development here. So is this the, the, the image of the, the future? So absolutely no. It's just the one kind of time travel. So from, from where we need to ask the question, how develop our future as a kind of framework, not a one image, one solution of the future. So that's right start point. Think about how to develop, how to collaborate, how to exchange our idea for the future. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.